Welcome to the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa Podcast, where we dive into the art and science of building a thriving med spa. I'm your host, Kat Toronto. In this podcast, we're all about empowering medical professionals and entrepreneurs like you with the knowledge, tools, and inspiration needed to elevate your practice to new heights. Whether you're just starting your journey or you're a seasoned expert looking to expand, this is the place where the industry's brightest minds come together to share their secrets to success. So sit back, relax, and get ready to unlock the potential of your med spa with the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast. Let's go on this journey together, one success story at a time. Um. Well, hey there. Uh, welcome uh, to Men Aesthetics and the Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa Podcast. This is our next episode, and we uh, are following up with uh, uh, the guest I love the most, uh, my daughter. And we had a, a Med Spa, um, I'm sorry, we had this podcast, uh, I don't know, several months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, the la- only thing I remember, it was the most uh, unusual podcast I've ever had because I had laryngitis worse than I've ever had it in my life. And I literally ran out of gas and could not get air and couldn't finish. And it came right at the right at the right Probably. moment. People Probably. ask me about, are you okay? Is he all right? Is he yeah. on the floor? We did, do we do CPR? No, I'm good. I'm <laughs> back. My voice is back. Everything's good. So, uh, I want to, uh, welcome my daughter, uh, Molly Austin, uh, who's a dermatologist here in Dallas. And, uh, um, we're actually, uh, at, at the time we're doing this is, it's a cool relationship. A lot of people think that we're in practice together and, um, we're not, uh, about it. but, uh, Molly really put an end to that. She said, you know, we're, we're too much alike dad. You, do you really want to rethink this? And so I think she was the wisest person mm-hmm. ever. So we, uh, we do, we, 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 we collaborate all the time. And, uh, I asked her, um, or any intelligent thing that I don't know, which is a huge list. I, I, I ask her and then maybe some practical surgical things she asked me. And so, but it's really great. I, I think sometimes the biggest thing I can offer my patients is a, I can call in a chit to get into dermatology in less than six months. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, uh, but anyway, we, we do, we do interact together a lot and, and it, we really help each other a lot. And, um, and it's a great relationship. We just got back, um, uh, from Telluride, we we went for about I don't know a week or so, uh, ten days uh, together. And uh, uh, Molly has uh, supplied uh, my wife and I with three grandkids and an amazing son-in-law. And so we we had a great time. And um, and yeah. we're we're very close. We live ten minutes from each other. Our office is about the same. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Molly, it's great to have you today. Thank you for having and, me. I'm excited uh, to be here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, there was some, uh, this is a follow-up um, to our original discussion. And so we're going to just make it really simple. And uh, there was quite a few questions that were asked of you primarily and us to some degree. So um, uh, let's uh, let's just, I'm just going to, in no particular order, um, I think I'll start with the clinical things first. And then at the end, they ask some things that only you can answer about how you manage your life as a mom and a dermatologist yeah. and whatever, uh, which is cool. So one of the things were, uh, let's just start with what have you um, uh, replaced or simply gotten rid of from a device standpoint? Um, there was another question that's very similar. We'll answer both of them at the same time. What were you doing a year ago um, that you're no longer doing? Uh, you have mm-hmm. any you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, a couple devices we've uh, traded out in the past year would be first, we had a um, Bavachi radio frequency microneedling device. Um, that was our first RF microneedling we bought. And then um, we traded that out for a genius um, uh, Lutronics mic- radio frequency microneedling, just better technology. And I think that has been um, an upgrade for sure. Um, and then, um, we just replaced our therapy with Softwave, And so those are our two big device shifts we've had in the past year. Um, we just got our Softwave this summer. Um, and so have it about to market that. I think y'all are maybe in the same position there, but so haven't really had, you know, all the 
clinical, like before and after is an experience with patients, but we're really excited about the technology there too. So I think it's for sure an upgrade. It's for sure less painful um, and better tolerated than, you know, old therapy. So if nothing else, I mean, I think it's going to be a great move. Right. Well, let me, let me uh, um, I'll dovetail in on that and then you can, you can comment as well. And um, uh, it's interesting because people think we do the same thing Now we discuss each other, but, but um, you know, you make your decisions independent yeah. of me. Uh, we usually you know, run past you, but yeah, we run past you, but just like everything else in life, she doesn't always do exactly yeah, what I, I don't, I don't, but um, um, the, um, you know, just as a summary for people to kind of know, I think I could speak for Molly uh, on this a little bit is that because we've discussed radio frequency a lot and I, I have a uh, on the uh, Kathy's going to kill me, but I, I think it's called the premium channel. But if it's not, I forgive me, but it's a channel that I'm on and I have a lot of my resurfacing and I have a lot of things I talk about. And one of the things I have talked about on that channel, and you can go check it out in more detail is, is, you know, why, you know, she might um, transfer from Vivace to Genius. And uh, that transition um, uh, is something that I I went through about four or five of, of Vivace-like things. I'm not trying to slam anybody, but unless you have impedance um, measuring, you know, you have a needle in the skin. And I always thought if you put a needle in the skin, anybody reasonable would measure impedance because that's how you determine what your energy should be you if the impedance high you'll get too much friction and you can burn somebody if your impedance is too low it'll go through and it won't do anything so i, I just thought but it, apparently it's very hard to do and it's expensive to do and so the only two companies that really do it well is is lutronic and uh and the, i'm sorry the genius and the profound but the genius has some a lot of things that i think um uh uh, are so much better in terms of the smaller thing, better blood supply with the smaller uh, 49 little small half millimeter, uh, uh, five millimeter uh, um, areas of injury. The profound has big areas of injury, which harder to get blood supply in there. So I kind of like, I definitely like the genius better. And I think that you and I both think it works a little bit better, right, Mal? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's, been, it's yeah. been a little more painful for my patients than the Vivace, but I think overall, the results are better and I'm, I'm really liking it also for acne scarring. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I, think, I think in your practice, you've got to have, and dad will tell you this, you know, I mean, you, you're a surgeon. So again, we always, you and I always talk about this, how you have patients that want to go under the knife and have the facelift. And then obviously we both have patients that are just don't want to do that, don't want to have any surgery. And so I think it's super important. I think the main takeaway here would be like in your practice, you need to have some sort of answer to the question, like what can I do to lift and tighten? Um, and and I think you just have to counsel them on expectations that it's not a facelift, but if you counsel them on that, you have to have something to offer them, right? Like you can't right. just it be surgery or some filler or what, I mean, that's not your answer. It's for that tightening and lifting, whether it be through the radio frequency or through ultrasound, I think you've got to have an option there. And so that's what, you know, we're excited about for soft wave too, I think. Um, yeah. And I think you can speak to the soft wave being different because uh, again, with our old therapy, it was so painful. And again, you risk a little bit of that fat atrophy just because it went a little deeper. And I like that this is kind of contained to the dermis and you're really going to get that dermal tightening. So we're excited about it. Right. I, yeah, I, I think so too. I think that um, soft wave wants to do, you know, everything we do all day, um, in our non-surgical and by the way, I am a surgeon, but the reason that I'm probably doing this podcast is because I'm a surgeon that realizes and I realized for the last 30 years that the data shows that 90% of the people that are going to aesthetic treatments are never going to let you do surgery on them. Yeah. So most of my colleagues just said, uh, uh, well, let them get ugly, you know, but, but I thought, you know, why don't we just make sure that we, that I can understand non-surgical, uh, uh, well and surgical well. So anyway, um, yeah. So the, the one thing about the discomfort with genius, um, is that, uh, you know, it might be slightly, it, it definitely, it's, it's tolerable, you know, you can put the local on and whatever, but you know, if it heats the tissue to 55 to 62 degrees, it's going to hurt a little bit and you have to be able to prepare for yeah. that. If anything yeah. doesn't hurt. The reason it doesn't hurt is because, you know, some of these machines like Morpheus um, and the other ones that, that treats to hundred degrees centigrade. And the minute you get 
some of them will even say, hey, listen to that snap, crackle and pop. You know, they don't even know what they're saying. They're saying, hear how this doesn't work, because the minute you have an air bubble, it breaks the positive and negative flow. And all you're having is hot needles. They all work, but you're just creating a fractional device that heats the needle yeah. and, and causes some needle that way. And so if you have a fractional device uh, and you buy something other than a genius or profound, you don't need you don't need that because yeah. you have fractional device. But anyway, yeah. Softwave puts the tissue down. I, I spent a lot of time with Ulthera in my early years and um, uh, really variable treatment, not really quite predictable. And it focused the ultrasound in a little ball. The ultrasound has a cylind the, the soft wave has a cylindrical um, uh, uh, electrode that puts a lot of, of uh, the columns of energy and heating are, are much more. And so you can see this immediate effect uh, which I think is really more probably drying out and and yeah. like that. But what our patients love, Molly, you, I, I've had it a, a few months longer than you, and I don't have patients out a year, so I'm going to put a asterisk by it. But our it's probably our by far our biggest growing device because the patients don't have downtime. They yeah. can go they can go work out. They right. don't it doesn't hurt as much. You want I mean I, right you, right right exactly. And I think that's. That is, I mean, and it's funny, we're, we're having a sale in our office this week. And so people are asking, what do we buy? What do we buy? And um, the soft wave, we haven't promoted it yet, but it's just to be able to tell someone that this is the answer to my question of the sagging, you know, droopy, crazy, like, you know, that's just what we have as our answer. But oh, also it requires no numbing and no downtime. They're like, sign me up, you know? So it's yeah. just sort of, and again, I mean, you've always taught me the lesson of if it seems too good to be true. It, it might be. And, and again, I think it's, it's, you have to counsel them that this is not a facelift, but people just want to try something. I've learned like, they just want to have hope that this can help. And it does, but I'm saying it's not a facelift and you just have to make sure they don't think it's going to be a facelift. But right. it, in, in the meantime, it buys them time and they're happy with minimal improvement. And even, I also say, this is going to help you maintain. We have so many young thir late thirties, early forties women. That's like my demographic. And so a lot of my partner and I's patients are that young where they're just starting to see the signs of aging. And so they just want to get on top of it. And those yeah. patients are always going to have better results, right? With any of this collagen boosting um, oh. and dermal tightening. And so you kind of go, okay, let's start now. You're seeing that slight little bit. It's really the, your pa like your 70 year old facelift patient comes in. That's the hardest one because you're like, I, I hope you see a difference with this, but you really need a facelift, right? So I think it's counseling those patients on, it's not a facelift, right? And we still refer out for plenty of facelifts. Uh, you can tell I'm. Uh, she's my daughter because my pet peeve is if when some when a when someone that doesn't do facelifts says, "Well, this is just like a facelift. This is instead of a facelift." And I go, well, "Apparently, you haven't oh, seen this." No, uh, because you won't yeah. do that. Uh, but but I think we use Softwave, you know, and 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 and, and radio frequency microneedling as well to some degree. Uh, we actually use them in combination. I think the combination of Softwave and Radio Frequency and Genius is. Mm something really pos uh, positive we've seen alternating, you know, not at the same time, but alternating for, oh, yeah. ac for acne scarring. We, uh -huh. we, uh, our girls really have, have, that's good. Uh, we have a, okay, good. That's good to yeah. remember as we yeah. work on that. Okay. I like my, that. Staff, my staff really like that, that it's a different way to go about the same yeah. thing, but we actually use it, you know, to maybe fend off a facelift for a while yeah. or, or maybe after they've had a facelift and, um, you know, four or five years later, you know, they're just a little laxity, but they don't want another facelift. Yeah. And, and so we're doing that. I saw right. a real good friend that, you know, yesterday for that. And, um, your mom's had a soft wave. I've had a soft wave. I had some recent surgery to try to get this, uh, uh neck taken care of. And, um, but what are they going to do for my forehead? So I'm using soft wave and, um, uh, you saw Molly's reaction is probably a lost cause. But I'm going to try it anyway, and I'm going to try to do several of them. So anyway, I think that's probably the, the one of the newest things that we've done. Um, for me personally, I've also done, I, I upgraded to the heroic. I think the, the heroic from Saiton is the intelligent control and the hero. And uh, so it's, 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 it makes it incredibly delegatable, even more safe um, and super fast. So it's really good on bodies. A lot of people, maybe you don't use it on the face because it's so fast, you know, you got to be very careful, but man, in terms of treating a back in 50 seconds, a uh, minute and a half, uh, it's, it sounds too good to be true, but it's 10 Hertz. The hero is four Hertz. The, uh, hero, the heroic at maximum is uh, about nine Hertz. Um, and 
and it's got a GPS. The, you don't like the, the my staff doesn't like the boom because it's in the way to some degree, but that boom makes sure you know where that it, that head is uh, within a millimeter. So there's no overlap. There's no striping. It, it's, it's, I think it's one of the greatest technologies I've ever seen in my 30 years. Looking to boost your treatment numbers and grow your clinic? With Vertly, you can capitalize on every moment clients are in your clinic. Vertly is the first screen management platform designed specifically for the aesthetic industry and is completely free for clinics. By downloading the free Vertly app on your smartphone or plug in device, you can seamlessly manage all screens throughout your clinic, showcasing engaging promotional content from the brands and devices you offer in your clinic. Hundreds of brands provide content for you to choose from, or you can upload your own media. Add call to action banners, brand tags, QR codes to drive engagement and measure results. You also have the flexibility to customize each screen in your practice to provide a unique and engaging patient experience. In a recent study, practices using Vertly saw an 83% increase, 83% in hydrofacial treatments per month when displaying the brand's curated videos. That's the power of effective, engaging content. Transform your patient's experience with Vertly. Use the link in our show notes today and take control of your screens like never before. Did you know when a provider completes a Mint Aesthetics clinical course and passes the quiz, they get a custom certificate acknowledging their work? We are huge believers that our employees are our best resource and training only makes them more valuable. These certificates not only boost their confidence, but can credential your team to clients as well. If you're interested in learning more about the Mint online e-courses, visit us at mintaesthetics.com. We found the perfect trio, virtual, quick, and free. Mint is hosting one-hour clinical trainings for e-course subscribers on the first Tuesday of each month at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We will be covering clinical topics like Sculptra, Genius, BBL, and Hydrofacial. Check out the link below in our show notes to learn more. Hi all, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. We are always looking for feedback to make it better, so be sure to give us your feedback at the link in the show notes. If you're loving the podcast, we would really appreciate it if you would share it with a friend, rate us five stars, and write a review. This really helps other clinics and industry professionals find our podcast. Thanks. Now let's get back to the episode. And then the other thing I won't dwell on, but we're, uh, we have done, uh, uh, you know, I'm national medical director of uh, uh, CPP. And so we have a real pulse on trends in the market and this, that, and the other. And body contouring right now is down 42% across the country. Um, and uh, wellness is up 278%, uh, primarily driven by the semiglutides and Ozempic. So we have added that to our clinic and uh, you have to, I, I, I wasn't gonna do it unless I did it right. I was I was worried about it. So I did a lot of research and we're doing it right and getting labs and testing and great stuff. And and so uh, I don't know how long that's gonna last, but those are the things we've added and and uh, taken away. Well, so uh, anything else on that, Ma? No, we, no, just, yeah, we don't do, we, we have not launched into anything at, well, we'll do soft wave on body and we'll do, you know, scar stuff, but we, we are not doing any body contouring or body anything, but that, but I think that's going to be very successful. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to go back through some of these other uh, uh, questions is uh, we talked at our first uh, podcast about um, combination therapies, which is yes. certainly, certainly taken off. And uh, they said, what are some examples of the combination therapies that you're doing? And uh, if so, what order do you do them in? And do you adjust the settings so that you're delivering less energy per device since it's a combo? Yeah. And so I think there's yeah. probably different ways to do it, but what's your way? And I'll comment yeah. on that. Yeah. I mean, lots of different combination therapies. Obviously, you know, we bought our genius and it was always recommended to do a moxie after. And I think we are not doing anything different we would treat the genius we would do the same genius and moxie settings as we would if we were doing them individually and you just combine them together and then um most of our moxies and halos have a bbl with it um 
my, my team and I were just having this discussion just while we're on this topic is, you know, I think um, there's a lot of fear about using uh, BBLs with, if you have any history of melasma. And I would say that in our experience, the trouble you get into is when you're doing a series of BBLs in someone with melasma and that's all you're doing. But I've really found that the combination treatment of BBL Moxie and BBL Halo, when that patient has that mix of regular, you know, pigment, sun damage, and maybe some redness and some melasma, that combination, you really are pretty safe if you're gonna combo it with a laser afterwards. We just really haven't had a huge problem with that being more of like a single treatment combo. Um, and then we've actually done a lot of, we call it the trifecta, but the BBL, Moxie and Halo at one time. And so really how we're doing that is the B a BBL Halo um, and the Halo is again more, I mean, dad, I know dad does his profrac and comes in and does that. We don't have a profrac, so we use our halo and kind of tune up those ablative settings and really go in and kind of, you know, crank those all the way up and do the perioral right tides and, and the periorbital and all those tough areas and then, and kind of a light halo in the background and then come over with a full, you know, full passes of moxie on top of it. And so that's yielded some really good results. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we're all about combo treatments. It even, you know, was hearing the other day of the soft wave moxie, you can do that same day. So anyways, I think, but I really think the BBL, Moxie, BBL, Halo, or the trifecta combos are most popular combination. So, yeah. So you, and you do, if I, if I heard you right, you do the BBL first, yep. Yep. then you do, then you Halo. do the Halo, um, and then you do the Moxie. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I think there's just some theoretical advantages of doing that. We do as well. And um, the Halo, if you'll remember, uh, has dynam dynamic thermal optimization. So, the halo actually is the first device that ever looks at the temperature of the skin and adjusts the the temperature, just the energy based on the temperature. Because Rox Anderson did a study where it showed that the in as the temperature increases on the skin, uh, the penetration of the laser actually goes deeper uh, to some degree. That's why you know at the end of your BBL it hurts worse than at the start, and and so. Um, so doing the halo second, it's a smarter device in terms of measuring the heat. So it's safer. So that's just another little tidbit yeah. to know. So BBL and halo. And yeah. then um, I would, I would echo what you said. I, you know, when the BBL, when the MJUL came out and they combined the BBL hero, which everybody was waiting on to talking about me included, I, you know, now you can do the body and, you don't have to bring your lunch to do an arm and that kind of thing. You can get through it pretty quickly. Um, but they put the Moxie on there, the Thulium. Um, and uh, that device has been the biggest surprise to me in terms of, I think that's probably the laser we use the very most of anything oh, yeah. because we combine it with everything. And uh, the reason is, is that, you know, um, the guy we're going to probably have on this podcast is uh, James Bartholomew, who's who, you know, Molly is brilliant. Yeah. And he, he really got me into the concept of, you know, why wouldn't you do as much to you as you can to a cubic centimeter of tissue as long as you can do it safely? He says, that's what you do when you do your aggressive resurfacing. And so he actually did a, a formula about how much tissue I destroy in a resurfacing if I'm going 600 microns, 100%. And he calculated that. And so you get closer if you start combining treatments. So we're treating deeply with the soft wave or the genius and then you can polish the skin with the mox yeah. and it's safe because it's separate yeah. technology. So we don't, yeah. we agree. We don't change the energy setting. We treat them with a full moxie and a full halo and a full BBL um, to yeah. some degree. You yeah. said you actually use the halo more aggressively around the mouth and the eyes to try to help that. And I think that's yeah. a great way to do it because a lot of people don't want the downtime that yeah. are Profrac that I that I do and 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 whatever. So yeah. I, I I think that's wise. Um, uh, any anything else? I can't think of any. No, uh, I mean, again, I, I do. I think uh, no. I mean, I think that's the main. Yeah, the only thing that I would say is that sometimes we'll do energy delivery. I don't know that that's a combo, but we'll do. You know, we'll do. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't have profrac, so they'll use a micro pen. But there's a lot of things now. You know, the moxie our Ethulium laser breaks the barrier. A lot of people think you need holes, but I think that it's been shown now that there's some devices that just break that DE junction and you can drip after a Moxie, you can drip um, uh, 
mm-hmm. Latisse and oh, yeah. steroids and things like that. But that's not really a combo of lasers. But I think we've yeah. addressed, addressed that question. Yeah. Um, this ties in with this ties in with some of the things you were talking about, how uh, with dark skin patients and BBLs. But what's unique? Do you have anything unique to your pre-treatment routines in terms of medications you like, skincare products? the dating uh, things. And, and and let's just go ahead and put post-treatment in there as well. Uh, anything that... I mean, we're, we're using that CMT from Revision for post, post-care post for um, Halo. And I'll be honest, uh, this is might be an area that we can improve in, and I'd be curious what y'all do. But we when we first started, we had a big Halo kit with the nectar. And I know y'all are big nectar people. To be honest, we don't do that anymore. We don't have a big kit with a bunch of products for Moxie. We've kind of just like we give them some samples of some Cetaphil, CeraVe, and like just tell tell them the instructions. But it's not a big kit with that has a big, you know, price tag to it or anything. And then with the Halo, they get that CMT. So you know, I really don't. I think that we that's not something where we've. I don't know. I mean, we could probably up that. It's probably be good for the patients to feel like they have a kit, but it just was a little expensive and I just didn't think that that it was necessary all the time. And so, um, but I love nectar, but we just, to be honest, I I mean, I haven't seen enough crazy difference, not using it. I don't know if y'all still do that. I think, I don't know. I'd be curious. You can tell me in a second what you do, but, and then pre-treatment wise, um, pre-treatment we do, um, you know, we ask everybody about cold sores, fever blisters before laser treatments. Our girls always ask that and we'll treat them with Valtrex um, for that week if they have anything. And then sometimes with my darker skin types, um, if we're going to do like a halo for acne scarring or something, I might prescribe some hydroquinone kojic acid combination to pre-treat for, you know, two to four weeks before they get that treatment just to help with any PIH. Um, And then they start that back kind of after. I also like combining hydroquinone with any laser, with, even with melasma, just to kind of help. I, I tell everybody melasma is going to come back. So I'm just trying to make your return on investment better by, by elongating the results with some, you know, hydroquinone. So sometimes yeah. we'll combine that. Yeah. Well, um, um, well, it's, this is interesting because it, it, this is funny. So Molly and I just spent, we spent a lot of time together. Um, um, I, I really actually spend more time with her grandkids while she goes out polluting with her husband and <laughs> the, husband. Yeah, right. but the point is is that is that um i can't believe we really haven't talked about this because jill wobble i've totally changed the way i i treat pih and melasma and it's probably been the single biggest advantage to my practice in the last four or five years to open up a whole new vertical and so i don't use hydroquinone anymore and it's basically jill teaching me all this i use mm-hmm. I used the, um, you know, the reason that you you were talking, it was interesting because you talked about, you said, hey, I found that if I use Halo and Moxie, I did, I typically, if I use, if I use, I'm sorry, if I use Hero alone, I, I might be able to get PIH and dark skin people and this, that, and the other. But if I combine it with Moxie and, uh, you know, a laser to follow and um, Jill uses Moxie on all of her PIH, she has mostly, as you know, type four skin and a Hispanic population in Miami. So I was on a, I was on this podcast with Jill and she said, you know, she patted me on my head and said, I don't ever use hydroquinone anymore. I said, what? It's just, it's crazy. And so I, so she basically uses um, the moxie if she sees PIH and then she goes through this protocol and she educated me that I never really gave steroids uh, after a laser treatment. Yeah. I didn't want to in, I didn't want to decrease this inflammatory cycle but she educated me that there's two inflammatory cycles one is long term that produces the new collagen and but a short one in two or three days is is um uh is the one that causes the, 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 yeah. the, the pigment deposition so I give on everybody that even blinks or thinks they might you know has an eighth Cherokee in them or whatever uh we will treat them with fluorinated steroids for three days, BID, uh, and immediately they can't go home. We fluorinated, we, we treat them with fluorinated steroids. And uh, I've got this on the premium channel um, here at Mint, at, but, um, and then we ice them. Uh, so they have to stay in the office for about 30 minutes. And then they do ice four times a day and the clobetazol. And I'll tell you that 95% of our PIH has gone away. Uh, it, it's It's one of those things that I got told by somebody I loved. And a lot of times, uh, it's true or it's not true. This is true. And we use it all the time. And we add the Illuminate 
uh, from Elastin. So uh, oh, that's every, awesome. After yeah, it, every, you're saying halo, halo anything. in a darker skin type. You're saying anything, anything. I use it after. I use it after Molly. I use it after my aggressive laser resurfacing. I I, I agree after yeah, definitely yeah. anything that causes this heat buildup that could cause PIH. It's just so easy, you know, you know, you can't use fluorinated steroids for a long time. And you've taught me that and a, a dermatologist and that's, it, it's just too strong, but for three days, it's not going to hurt anything for BI. Yeah. And I learned it yeah. from, I learned it from Obagi. So I just think that, P, I think that PIH protocol is really, really helpful. Yeah. Uh, and I do think, and I do think that I do use the, the nectar and things like that, but, uh, but I will tell you that it is expensive. Mm -hmm. And if a patient doesn't want to do it, you know, I don't know that that it makes a monstrous difference. But theoretically, the study, you know, uh, by Fabi's group out of San Diego showed that if you used it for three weeks, it helped in the healing phase and whatever. But if somebody comes in and they want resurfacing next week and they don't do their three weeks, I, I treat them. And, and yeah. but I think you have to have both. You have to have something that's practical and something that, yeah. you know, for a, a lot of my patients, um, they come into a plastic surgery office. You and I have talked about it. They're slightly different. It doesn't mean that they're wealthier than yours or whatever. They just have different expectations. And so some of them want everything I can give them. And if they do, I, I treat them with pre and post and, and all yeah. that. kind. Of. All right. Um, uh, somebody quoted uh, uh, an article that we discussed the first time around that I mentioned. It was called the 747 study. And uh, it was a, a study uh, published, uh, Renato Saltz uh, uh, was on that article, and uh, I've, we're going to have this article. They said, can I read more about it? So we're actually going to have the article either in the appendix or the notes of this, or maybe it's going to be up on the screen for you. Um, uh, but we'll have that article. It's worth reading. But the bottom line is what we were talking about was, is that, um, you know, I'm not sure that um, we've not talked about it, but laser hair, hair removal is not my favorite thing to do. It's um, um, it smells up the office. It's uh, it's uh, it, 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 it's 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 commoditized, but it's an example of you providing everything the patient needs so they don't have to go anywhere else. Yeah. And so what the study showed was that if you provide everything your patient needs and there's no reason for them to go anywhere else then the chance of them leaving you is 7%. And this was a long-term, like a 15-year study. And um, uh, they'll quote me on that, but I think it was that long. But it, it's a very good study. It was actually the most quoted study for many, many years uh, published in PRNS. And, but if you let them go out, if they ever left to go out to get a hydrofacial or a, or a laser hair removal or whatever, once they left your office and had any other experience, the chance of them leaving you was 47%. So, oh, so uh, it, it's, it's, it. it's worth noting that, you know, try to be a full service bank and uh, to do everything your patients need within reason, you know, you, yeah. not, every, not everybody can afford it. You have to start off, but, but I think you're building, you've built your practice uh, into an amazing practice that, that tries to cover a lot of those things. So, yeah. That's what the study's well, about. And we've got the article. You can read more about it. You know, you wanted, you said it makes sense. No, no, no. I, and I think that's, I think that's the whole, I, I think you asked me at the last podcast, kind of how I know when to, when to buy the next thing. And it's, you know, you, you just listen to your patients and you, you figure out what you're, what you, what they're wanting and what they're, what you found yourself referring out for. Obviously when we started five years ago, I didn't have every device to, to, you know, solve it all of the, you know, to, to meet all their needs, but then you realize, Hey, I think we'd have enough patients to support this if we brought this in. And I mean, I, you know, mentioned this when I talk about the, the clarity to our laser hair removal, I didn't have it for the first couple of years. Cause I, I mean, you and I both thought, or at least I did, you know, laser hair, that's such a, yep. you know, kind of like, you know, just cliche meds buffing and here we're dermatologists and we're, you know, we don't need laser hair, you know, we can refer out for that. And then we realized that everyone asked for laser hair. And so, and now, and then you buy the best device and you, you know, guarantee great results for your patients and you're, they're staying here. So I, I totally think that study is absolutely so important to note. And so it is. It is. And so I think you make a really good point. We both, we both, um, we both chose, uh, 
uh, the clarity. Um, uh, I think there's some other, um, the XLV was a good hair removal laser in the, I'm sorry, that's a KTP, forgot, forgive me, but Qterra makes a good device. Um, uh, but the upgrade from Qterra, um, uh, is actually the clarity too that James had a role in playing. We just mentioned James Bartholomew, and then the bear that Saiton sells is a is a is a is a very uh, good hair removal device. But to me, if you're going to do laser hair removal, it's commoditized, so you better do it as quickly and as 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 you can. So the clarity has the biggest spot size. It's super fast. It has cryogen cooling, which you know, I've had laser hair removal and it, you know, to say that cryogen um, makes it makes it not painful is not true. This it right. zaps, you know, it zaps. But but the point is you want it, you want it, you want to get a patient in there. If you're commoditized and it takes you 30 minutes to do a back, you will absolutely lose money every sure. time in droves. But if right. you can do that, if you can do it in five minutes, it starts to make sense. So right. you're going to get laser hair removal, get something really fast with a big spot size that can, that can get through the treatment quickly. Cause you're not going to make a lot of money on it. And even if you just broke even, you keep everybody in your office. Well, so, yeah. And again, I think you can, if patients will pay a little extra to stay within your practice for something like laser hair, to, to be with, you know, providers that know them and care about them that they already have that relationship with. And so I yep. think you have the advantage of charging more than say, you know, laser away or hair removal med spa, you can go, Hey, yeah, we're a premium med spa. So we charge more than laser away, but you know, you get what you pay for. So. Right. Right. And, um, so, um, now we're switching a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to sit back and listen to all your answers because oh, I, I really think you're, um, um, super proud of you for what you've done. And, and, but it, it, this patient, this uh, question was, you're so young. Uh, what contributed to your success so early in your career? Well, you know, just to give some background, um, you know, on my kind of path that I, that I took was, you know, right after residency here at Southwestern did Durham for four years of residency. And then I joined a, uh, you know, we're from Dallas, grew up here, and I joined a private practice in Dallas with just another solo dermatologist. And um, that's really where I learned derm for four years and learned the ropes of just being in private practice. But I did mostly medical dermatology there. I didn't make any money off anything I sent to any of his estheticians or anything. And I really didn't. I learned how to do Botox and filler myself, but I wasn't exposed to meds, to lasers and, you know, um, even microneedle. I mean, I just wasn't exposed to any of that in those four years, but I really feel like I gained a great foundation um, in dermatology and just how to care for patients. And then I think the key, um, you know, advantage I had was here, I, you know, had four years in a dermatology practice in Dallas. And when I signed with this um, dermatologist, I told him that I could not sign a more than one mile non-compete. Like, I'm just not going to do it. And, um, and so I didn't. So he gave me a one mile non-compete. So when I decided to start my practice with my partner, um, who was an old high school, went to high school together, we, I could move about a mile away from my practice where I'd established all these patients. And so needless to say, most everybody followed. And so I was able to start a practice with a great, both of us, my partner and I both had a great patient load when we started. And so that was really, really helpful. And not everybody gets that advantage. If you're moving to a new city or you're, go, you're starting a practice right out of residency or right out of, you know, whatever, you know, you, you kind of have to start from scratch. But I think, I think that having that patient load of patients that trusted me and knew that I knew skin just allowed our med spa, since we're talking mostly about med spas here, allowed our med spa to just populate and patients just automatically went to the med spa. And so it was a great, um, you know, I was able to do that all at one time and we got busy rather quickly. And then I think, so that's kind of from a practical logistical standpoint of how my practice sort of grew quickly. And I think, um, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, I just think that people um, will stick with providers, physicians, you know, estheticians that they feel that 
that actually care and aren't just about getting their money. And I think that that's my biggest advice to anyone is that the money will come if that's not your main priority, to be honest with you. It's, it's if patients actually feel like you are wanting to do what's best for them. And, and that might mean not getting that procedure or going and getting a facelift instead of spending thousands of dollars in our med spa or you know whatever it may be. I think if you establish that trust with patients and our, our girls, the girls in my med spa know that too. Like we, you know, if they, if they feel like that you're, you have their best interest at heart, they will actually do whatever you recommend. Right. And so I think just patients feeling like at the, at the end of the day, we care about them being happy with their treatments and not just about making money has ended up making us more successful. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Um, we're going to, we're going to play a little game. Um, I'm going to be your patient and I'm going to come, you ask me what's wrong and I'm going to go, I just want something that does. <laughs> yeah. I, I say, well, that's the facelift sign. And that means that you ultimately will probably want a facelift. Yeah, she but what me, we can offer you here in the meantime is blah, 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 you know? So, yeah, yeah. She told me one time that at dinner, she said, dad, when they come in and they do this, I'd oh, say yeah, this, this right here, my dad, here, here's my dad know, they, this is like, okay. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so that's, that's, that's my spiel there, but, um, well, let me, let me just ask you one more question on that. Well, is that, is that you were told, um, uh, again, I mean, this is, uh, um, I mean, you were in that practice not very long at all when they sold to private equity. Mm -hmm. And um, and you were told by many people in town that you that was just the future. You had to join private equity or you would never make it. And you were the absolute mm -hmm. example that that is 100 percent not true. Uh -huh. Totally and, 100%, and, yeah. and so if you know that we you have people out there that are in your position that are saying, what should I do? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was in the largest group of the country between us and Long Island would go back and forth every year, but, uh, and now I'm in solo practice and I've never been happier. And so, um, I, I don't know if you want to talk about that, uh, or not. No, I mean, I think, I think that, um, you know, we, I think that learning the ropes and, and not having to run my own business at the very beginning of learning how to be a dermatologist was invaluable for me to, be able to go home at night and not worry about someone calling in sick the next day and what we're going to do because my PA, you know, can't come in. I mean, you know, it's like the, 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 just the, the things that pop up that you are always having to deal with, which that's probably another question, but, but I just mean, that was a wonderful, simple time of life to learn how to be a doctor and how to care for patients and how to treat skin issues. Um, but at the, at the same time that the, he sold with, sold to private equity four years in. And then you have to realize your worth because my revenue stream contributed to the sale of that practice. Yet I got $0 for that. And that was just sort of a big wake up call for me of like, I think I'm worth more than that. I, I made him money and I made him his practice sale go up, but I'm still making the same amount of money I'm making. And so it was more just like that. This doesn't feel like I'm, you know, it's not all about the money and that's never what's driven me. It was more just I know what I'm worth. And I, I don't think that that's, that's not where I want to stay forever. Right. And so, yeah, people thought that we couldn't do it. Um, but I'm, but it's just not true. And I think they were, those were private equity, uh, doctors who were telling us that. Um, and, and so I think that if you, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it's not it, it, getting, starting just like dad started, you know, you can say that starting the business is obviously is blood, sweat and tears, but once it gets going and becomes more of a well-oiled machine, um, you delegate and you have people that help you run things and it's doable. Yeah. Um, the, um, uh, we're going to go back to that, but I, I just remember that I forgot one thing I wanted to ask you on the clinical side of that mall is, um, a lot of times I'll send you patients and, um, uh, you really help me out on, you know, some you know complex skin issues or whatever, but, but, you know, uh, people come to me, as you know, for the real aggressive resurfacing. And so if people had these sebaceous hyperplasias and there were like like uh, a few here and there, I would go and try to get all those. And, uh, you know, uh, I've talked about that and I won't go into this detail, but you can curate them, you can cauterize them, you can, you know, do all kinds of things. And that's not the, the point here. But the point was, is that you opened my eyes to low dose Accutane. Because there's some people that come in and they just look like they have bad skin. But if you look closely, 
they've got hundreds of these little sebaceous hyperplasias. Yeah. And so, and so tell them about uh, yeah. you, if, if they have more if they have more than ten sebaceous hyperplasias, and I can pick up on that. Um, I just say, you got to go see my daughter and, and she's going to give you this low dose Accutane. So you might, I just want you to talk yeah. about, well, I'll I, think back have, I think we'll have a picture of a before and after here that'll pop up, but go ahead, Mal. Well, let me just say, first of all, that, you know, we hear the word Accutane. I want to have a little disclaimer here that, you know, we, we do a lot of Accutane in my office for teenagers and cystic acne, and that is what it is FDA approved for. And that is the bulk of how I use it. And we, check pregnancy tests and ch women of childbearing capability every month. And we, you know, obey all the rules and, and do it as indicated for those patients. The population we're talking about here is more of your postmenopausal female or your males. Okay. So this population here is a wonderful population to use low dose Accutane in. So what we have found is, so let's take a male for instance, which I think is the picture that you guys could see. Um, this male struggled with acne his whole life. He's always been acne prone. And quite frankly, a lot of these patients have done Accutane courses as a teenager. They got their acne under control, but now as a 50 year old male, they just see all these small bumps popping up on their skin. And they're, and they just always say my, my texture is just not what it used to be. And, you know, it's just not smooth and it's real bumpy and porous. Um, and these patients generally have more just again, sebaceous oily skin. And then they start to pop up these sebaceous hyperplasia, which are just enlarged oil glands in the skin. Um, and then you have the same situation with post with, with postmenopausal women. So, um, you know, uh, what we've discovered, like when I would send dad, these patients, I mean, you know, it's just nothing quite shrinks the oil glands from the inside out like Accutane. That's just how it works. That's how it works for acne. It permanently shrinks those oil glands. And so um, a very, very low dose of Accutane, um, you know, even usually how I start this is I'll start them off on kind of a daily, you know, depending on their weight, it all varies, but 20 milligrams, 30 milligrams, something a day. And I, it really just takes usually a month or two to get all those oil glands, those sebaceous hyperplasia to just kind of involute. And then we get them on a, a maintenance dose, which for some patients can be as low as 10 milligrams a week or 10 milligrams every other week. Um, and, and just for those of you not familiar with Accutane, it's an extremely low dose. It's I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't cause me any hesitation at all. We, um, don't even check labs anymore in teenagers we do Accutane on. Um, and so as long as any older patients getting their labs checked yearly by a PCP, I don't worry about it. Um, I, I, I want to say that Accutane isn't something that willy nilly anybody should prescribe. Obviously this can only be prescribed by dermatologists. I think the takeaway here is that for med spas, um, if you, if your patients are really struggling with these sebaceous hyperplasia and you're giving them the highest strength you know, or maybe they're on tretinoin and they're just not, they're just not getting there. Your answer is low dose Accutane is the only way they're going to see those bumps really involute from the inside out. Um, and so in the right patient, it can be a really, really impactful medication. And it does also just kind of tighten up those pores. Um, and overall the texture just improves dramatically. So when I do my preceptorship, I show her before and after pictures and I, I, I got a kick because there was a couple of you know, you can tell the dermatologist they've got these beautiful skin with no tan and whatever. And that was not, that was not my girl. She was a, she yeah, was. Yeah, I did. Tan, I did get some tans. Yeah. Tan. Anyway, she was, she they started laughing. I said, what, what's so funny? And she said, well, if the truth were known, there's a lot of dermatologists that take that low dose, that low dose Accutane just to make our skin look. I'm going to lie. Gray. It's, it's kind of magical. Um, but again, nothing but, to mess around with. We just have to make sure everybody understands that it's category X pregnancy. So it's very important. You only use it in the right patient. And um, so, yeah, but it's, it's a great, it's just a, a something else in your toolbox uh, to refer out for, or if you're a dermatologist to use. And um, I'm always happy to answer questions about Lotus Accutane because I do love it. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, we, I have patients from out of town that come in for me for a facelift or whatever like that. And Molly can actually send some virtual consults and things like that on, on Lotus Accutane. Not everybody does it, I, I, but it's, it's just been, it's just amazing to me how well it works. And so I could do resurfacing all day long with my curette and try to do all these things and I'll never get their skin looking great. But boy, if you do the low dose Accutane thing and then get their wrinkles, I mean, it's, it's mind blowing what, what, what you can achieve. And I just wanted you to talk about that. And I do want to emphasize again, I don't ever prescribe Accutane ever there. You have to be, don't you have to be certified yeah, Molly to registered in the iPlex system? Yeah. It's, it's, it, you, you'd have to send yeah, it. So, 
Yeah. So you have to get help with this if you're not a dermatologist. But so I'm not saying go do it. I want you to know about it and get it to the right person who's registered and it does it well, because there's a lot of complications. And I don't ever give uh, Accutane out. I I, I send them to to Molly. Um, Okay, great. I wanted to talk about that. Um, So as we we wrap up, I think I got three questions here. Um, uh, They're somewhat interrelated, but how much extra time do you have to give to running your own business? And do you have to take, do you have to take that part home with you at night? Hmm, Yes. Well, okay. So um, there's a, there's a lot to running your own business. And I think it's, it's, um, you know, it's all about trying to, um, you know, delegate and, and um, divide up work. So my partner and I, I have a, you know, similar demo, like we're both young moms of three kids and we're both trying to do it all. Right. And so we divide and conquer. And so that has been amazing for me. Not everybody wants a partner in their practice. It doesn't work for everybody, but for me, um, that we are, we're basically wives. We share our life. We, we just delegate, we divide and conquer and we, um, have a fabulous relationship. Um, and I think that's important if you're going to be a partner with somebody that you, that you can have that. But for me personally, I can't imagine, um, what I would, how I would do this all on my own, if I'm being honest. And so I love that I have her, we bounce ideas off each other. We, you know, it's just, we check each other. It's like, Hey, do you think this is crazy? Do you like this idea? What should we do here? And so it's so much collaboration and, um, you know, we're there for each other. So that is just, I just have to say up front is a godsend. And then, um, you know, we haven't mentioned, you know, my, my husband trip, um, who manages the whole practice and has taken a lot of the, um, just all of the business aspect and the just details off my plate. When we started this, he was not on full time. And so we were literally the ones hiring and firing and figuring out what forms they need, our employees need to fill out and literally doing it ourselves. And so when he came on, it just took that all off our plate. And so I think, again, getting things off my plate that I can delegate to other people has been huge. Um, I do have to bring, I, I, we sign notes, obviously I have notes to sign. We sign every single visit that's done in this practice, every single office visit, whether it be a hydrofacial, it's crazy, but we look at these notes and we sign them. And so I have a lot of work at home that I do. I do. I sign it. Hi all. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. We are always looking for feedback to make it better. So be sure to give us your feedback at the link in the show notes. If you're loving the podcast, we would really appreciate it. If you would share it with a friend, rate us five stars and write a review. This really helps other clinics and industry professionals find our podcast. Thanks. Now let's get back to the episode. Are you showing valuable content to clients in your practice? Meet Vertly, the first smart TV app-enabled screen management platform that gives you exceptional control of the content displayed around your clinic. With Vertly, you can manage all of your screens from one easy-to-use platform. No more fiddling with USB sticks or outdated playlists. Simply download the Vertly app on your smart TV and you're set. You don't have a smart TV? No worries, Vertly works with leading brands of plug-in streaming devices to give you access to this incredible tool. Plus, onboarding is a breeze. It's just 15 minutes you can be showing fresh, vibrant content to your patients. Vertly offers a constantly updated content library with videos from hundreds of brands across the aesthetic industry. Customize your screens with your own photos and videos too. The best part? It's free for clinics. Brands cover the cost, so you can focus on what you do best, providing amazing care. So why wait? Take full control of your practice screens today with Vertly and see the difference it makes. Use the link in our show notes to get started today for free. Need an onboarding program for your medical aesthetic clinic? The Mint Aesthetics online e-courses are the perfect resource for your entire team. 
Our all-inclusive annual rate grants your team unlimited access to over 30 courses, more than 170 hours of educational and hands-on video, and well over 600 downloadable resources. The best part? We're constantly adding fresh, valuable content. Check out the Mint eCourses for your team today. Visit us online at mintaesthetics.com or give us a call at 913-338-2553. Get started on your journey to excellence today. We found the perfect trio, virtual, quick, and free. Mint is hosting one-hour clinical trainings for eCourse subscribers on the first Tuesday of each month at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We will be covering clinical topics like Sculptra, Genius, BBL, and Hydrofacial. Check out the link below in our show notes to learn more. Do you know an outstanding med spa, doctor, manager, provider, or groundbreaking treatment that is reshaping the industry? Nominate them for Mint's Clinics to Watch. We are so excited to launch this initiative to recognize the true leaders in our industry. Our aim is to spotlight those leading the way to excellence, providing valuable insights for others to pave their path to success. Check out our website for past winners of the Clinics to Watch. You can also nominate someone at the link in our show notes. Share your nominations and be part of celebrating the industry leaders. Let's inspire and build success together. Maintaining a fresh, engaging catalog of content for your practice has never been easier. Vertly is the first smart TV app-enabled marketing platform designed to give you complete control of your in-office screens. Imagine having a library of high-quality, curated content at your fingertips. With Vertly, you can access videos from hundreds of brands and upload your own content to. Choose what brands you offer in your clinic and cast it to any screen in your office. Best of all, Vertly is free for clinics. Brands pay the cost, allowing you to enhance your practice with a free and easy tool to use. Plus, Hydrafacial saw an 83% increase in treatments per month in clinics using Vertly. What could it do for you? Make screen management effortless and effective with Vertly. Use the link in our show notes to get started for free today. note. Uh, but I think even more than just the manual, there's just mental headspace that I have to make sure. Um, I've got three young kids, eight, seven, and three. And when I come home, it's full on mom mode. And so it's, it's kind of shutting that down and closing the iPad, putting the phone away and not answering the 16 unread texts and just saying, I'm going to do that later and being present. I think that's just general rule is being present where you are is hard as a working mom. Um, but you have to be, or else you're always going to be pulled in different directions. Right. So I think I just try to be present where I am and work when the kids go down after they're asleep and just carve out time. And I pre-plan my whole week down to like the hour. So I just try to try to be really good about pre-planning and trying to fit it all in. Yeah. So, a uh, couple of things, uh, a lot of people would say, um, or not a lot of people, but some people might say, oh, well, that's why she's done it. Her husband is a CPA with a banking degree, and he comes in and runs the practice. Well, the point is, that's really not your point. I, I think the point is, if I'm yeah. honest with you, the one of the things, the biggest mistake that I used to think, and I think most surgeons think this, um, I don't think doctors are just tremendous business people. Um, there are exceptions, but, but um, I always hired a manager but I was so tight that I wanted it to be my RN who could make her salary and manage. And it's just what a disaster that was. Yeah. Uh, it would never work. A manager will make you so much money and will also create time, which has tremendous value. Yeah. I would say the most important thing you could do, whether it's your husband, that's great. And yeah. a lot of times, a lot of times I'll tell you, cause I, I deal with a lot of clinics and we look at clinics and it looks like everything's great. And then the spouse comes in and they think they know it all. And it's yeah. just it's just a quagmire and the staff hates them. And so it can go wrong. The point is, whether it's your husband or your wife or your or manager, you don't know, 
managers will make or break your clinic, in my opinion, in terms of having it run, helping with your culture. You just have to spend the money and get a great manager. You can't do it right from the start, but mm -hmm. I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Mom? Oh, yeah. I, I just mean, absolutely. Just and somebody you trust, which obviously we trust my husband, but it's it's that you hear so many of those crazy stories of money laundering. And I mean, money, you know, putting putting money, taking money and you know, whatever, yeah, just dishonesty yeah. there. So, um, but yeah, I think just knowing, you know, I just mean taking the stuff that can be delegated to that person and giving it to them and trusting them will make your life so much easier. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to comment on that I think you're really good at, and I'm not so good at, I think, I think there's a little difference in, in, in this with plastic surgery and derm, but um, you know, you said, how do you, you're talking, talking about taking it home with you. I know that we've laughed about this a lot, but, um, I think it's generational. I think it's Molly. One thing I want to say is that, that Molly prioritizes, um, you know, I preach all the time on, uh, I run a full-time ministry away from this. And I've learned that, you know, I, I ask everybody, you know, it's parents that are struggling with um, with addiction, whether their kids are struggling with addiction or their spouse is struggling with addiction. So I have to go back and if they want my help, I say, well, what's your purpose? What do you, what do you, um, what's important to you? I mean, how can I help you if I don't know if it's to make all the money in the world or to have peace at your home, that looks differently than if it is to have your uh, kid or have it be responsible or whatever. So, and, and it's trans, it's, it's just, it dictates who I am. And so I have a purpose statement and a mission statement. And uh, I ask every single employee what their purpose and what their mission statement is. And after they stop, they have no idea what I'm talking about. It really is cool to watch them go through it and figure out why do you get out of bed in the morning? Uh, you know, I want to know that if I'm going to hire you, whatever, but Molly's got it figured out. I really believe that. Cause I mean, she has uh had the opportunity being my daughter. Uh, every industry person in the world says, Hey, let's get your daughter on board. You know, when you're gone and, and uh, after she, she leaves the the cemetery, when she buries you, I, I want her to take over and, and get on the podium and we need young people. And, and Molly has always been, uh, has always, uh, if I made magna cum laude, she made it a little higher. She's always made better grades and, and, and I did pretty well, but she's really brilliant. She could do anything she wants to. She speaks well, as you can tell, she has those opportunities and you have turned that down. I mean, it's yeah. funny talking about it. We've, we've spoken twice together and, and one of them's tonight, but, but we, you've been doing this for many, many years, but you made that a choice. Um, so I, I want to, I want, I, I think I'd love for you to talk about how you made that choice and what your priority is and yeah. you work three days a week. Right. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah. So about that. yeah, well, thanks for saying that. I, I, I think that's the biggest, I mean, I just think, that boundaries are so important when you are going to try to juggle it all because being a working mom and a wife, you just have a lot um, of responsibilities to all these people, your patients, your, you know, my husband, my kids. And so I think that you just have to make, I mean, life is just a series of choices that I'm making every day. Right. And so I, 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 your pres we're all presented with opportunities. Will you, you know, just, just opportunities that are going to take time from our day and our, and our life. And so I think that truly, I just have set, I just have learned that at this phase in my life, I don't want to do much that takes away from me being at home with my family on a weekend or even on a weeknight. I mean, you were speaking tonight, like you said, and really this is the only company I speak for and, and, and it's, I do it with you and we're going to sit at a table with mom and trip and it'll be fun but that's my family and I'm there with my family. And to me, that's worth it. But, um, at this point in my life, it's just, again, what, am, what am I chasing? I don't need to be famous. I don't need to, I I'm the best that I can be right now for my patients and my family, but I don't have to be the best in the world. Um, and I don't have to think that I am. I don't need anybody else to think that I am. I'm doing my best and I, I do the best I can for my patients and my kids and my, my husband. But if, but it is so easy for me to say no to the fluff because I just learned so, you know, clearly that that's just taking time away. And, um, I always regret when I say, yeah, if I say yes to something like that, if it, I know at the time I'm going to wish I hadn't. Right. So I just preemptively kind of say like, no, I just don't think I'm going to make it work. And I've learned to not, I don't always have to have a reason. Right. I don't always have to say, well, I'm, I'm out of town or I already have a commitment. It's just like, 
I mean, you know, these drug dinners, we get asked to go to all the time or speaking. It's just, I just am not in a phase where that works for me, you know, and you just have to be okay with saying that. And, um, and, and, and yeah, sometimes I've told you in my vulnerability, you look at people and go, oh, man, I could have been, maybe I could have been that spokesperson, or I could have done this or really, you know, dove into this, you know, niche in dermatology or lasers, but I just don't have, I know that something would suffer if I did that right now in my life. And so I'm choosing to just, you know, keep those boundaries and be the best I can be, you know, right now where I am. So. And a lot of people say that, but you can see that they're torn really. Yeah. And I've never seen you be torn. You know, I, the thing that I really respect about you is that you, you have made that choice and, and you're comfortable with it. And so when you told me that the first time, like, you know, like dad, Hey, look, you know, I, I could do this and, you know, part of me wants to do it, but it's not a time in my life. I need to do this. This is my priority. And for a moment I was disappointed and I thought, well, maybe I, that's the best, that's the best example of that mom and I did it right. I mean, I think that no. you, you, yeah. you you, you've been raised. That's the right answer for mm -hmm. sure. It's the right answer. But wow. one, th one thing that I laugh about is that, that, um, uh, you know, I don't, and, and I, I think, I don't think your friends are going to be watching this, but, but the point is the people that text you, oh, and yeah. she draws the man. I'll tell you, if you want to get into her eye, just, uh, just text I mean, her, text yeah. her a picture and have her give a diagnosis. Over uh, well, it's just everybody, you know, it's just so funny how, I'm like, nobody, there's just certain fields in medicine that you're not going to get picture texts for, right? Like your card cardiologists, cardiologists don't get picture texts all the time, but dermatology does. And so it's just part of the gig. But I also think that uh, I've learned boundaries of like, I don't have to respond to every, you know, text about a skin question or, and then liability wise, you really can't, like, I can't, I can't manage something over a text all the time. I can't get a picture of a mole and tell you it's fine. So I've learned that it's okay also to just, you know, say, I'll see you in the office for that or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that you know we always worry about relationships, but if relationships have a string attached, it's it's really not a, a relationship. It's more right. of, it's more of a business deal. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, I, 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 Molly's helped me with that to say no a little bit, but I, I grew up in a whole different generation where you know I just bend over backwards, and you know my wife's paid the penalty for that, so I'm trying to get better at that. But she's really good at that. So if you're asking how you do it, I hope you get you got a really great um, sense of of how you might do that. I, if you're really struggling with that, the best book I've ever read on that is called Essentialism by Jack McCowan, and uh, there's a statement in there that really has resonated with me forever uh, since I've read it, and I really try to, to do this. And he says you know, um, you just have to choose your priorities and what you want to do. Yeah. And he's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's easy saying no to bad things, right? I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to get pulled away by doing something bad or, you know, you know, yeah. drinking and smoking and cheating and doing, yeah. doing crazy things that are bad. But, um, and so for those that you're out there smoking and drinking and cheating, forgive me. <laughs> But the point is, is that it's what's hard is to say no to good things so that you can do the best thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Every opportunity, you know, it doesn't have to be a, yeah, it's, 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 you're going to sacrifice something else saying yes to some opportunity. Right. So it's just sort of like weighing, is yeah. that worth it? So, and, and, there's not and, much I, and I think I probably helped you make that decision because I love new things and I, I I get a ton of opportunities and it's crazy. Even at my age, I have probably more opportunities now than I've ever had because I've got 35 years in the business and I've got some credibility and I could say no, yes to a lot of stuff, but, and I say no a ton, but she knows that I should say no to a lot more. Um, so anyway, she's great on that. So uh, two left. Um, how do you, how do you separate a work and personal life with being in medicine with your dad. Now we're not in medicine together, but we kind of are in medicine together. Yeah. Practice. Is it all shop talk? So. No, I think normally it's like when we talk, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times the driving force of a phone call might be, Hey, can I ask you about this patient? Or can I get your advice or what do you, and then we always segue into personal. It's kind of like, I think a lot of our conversations are combined. Like, what are y'all, you know, what are y'all doing tonight? Or how are you with this? And like, it's a com combination of personal and work. I feel like in a lot of our conversations and, um, but that's just what's cool about it. And, or, or we call for something personal and then it segues, Oh, can I ask you about a patient or what would you do here? And so I, I, I don't know. It's not, 
totally separated. But I, I also don't think that we talk too much shop. I think sometimes like on family vacations, like I don't really want the whole conversation to be about skin and lasers. Like I, I don't want that. I want it to be normal. And I want my, my kids not to hear us talk about that all the time and just see us as father, daughter and pop pop to my kids. And so I think that we say that a lot just for you and I talking. Yeah, no, I, I have to tell you that I, one thing that I will say is true is that is that, you know, Molly doesn't, you know, she says, I don't care about being famous or whatever that and the other. And clearly I have achieved some uh, notoriety. I have paid the price for that. Um, I, I, I am not a big deal. My wife reminds me of that all the time. But, but my work and that stuff, I think Molly would tell you that I could, I mean, it doesn't define me. And yeah. and so for us to talk about it all the time would be weird. I, I don't want to talk about it all the time. What's important is, you know, my faith and my family. And that's what we talk about. And so we don't, we don't get in the ditch and talk shop and have it, you know, if I, if something goes bad and, and we, but, but, but the cool thing about it is if we have a patient, it's kind of cool to have somebody at dinner go, dad, this patient was totally crazy today. And yeah. Am I crazy or are they crazy? And so we, we, you know, it's, it's really been fun. The fact that I can go and talk to her about some stuff and we talk medicine, we talk that same language is super fun. And it's such a privilege, but we do not get carried away with it at all. We we, we're we're back to the grandkids and. um, Well, and like you said, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's more the camaraderie of dealing with the patients or something that we maybe wish we'd done differently yeah. Is it going to be okay? Oh, what should I do? It's, it's that. And for me, it's somebody having a mentor that's, you know, 30 years ahead of me in this kind of telling me it's going to be okay. <laughs> and a lot of the time. And then having somebody, thir- you know, uh, 30 years behind me, uh, you know, helping me have a different perspective on, yeah. on, uh, on, on things. So, um, so the last one was, do you see yourself staying in Durham with aesthetics long-term or do you think you'll lean more into one or the other? Well, you know, I think, you know, our, our practice is always going to be see medical dermatology and I will always probably keep right now. I work three days a week and one of those days is medical and it's all I see are medical. Usually it's skin checks or spot, spots of concern or rashes. Um, and then my other two days are strictly cosmetics. And so um, I think that I'll always have a combination. I really like, I've just established such a great rapport with a lot of my skin check and medical derm patients that I can't ever see myself not doing that. Um, but you know, I think for me long-term on in the vein of, you know, right now in my life, I'm, I'm sticking to simplicity more than anything. Um, I'm going to stick with what I know and do cosmetics, um, like more injectables on those days, but I would, and, and laser I, I do, we work with, I do a lot of my vascular laser, but I would love to, you know, follow in dad's footsteps and one day, be, be better trained on doing more of the, you know, ablative lasers that dad does. But again, right now in my life, I cannot bring that on and, and, and open that up. So I'm going to wait, you know, when my, all my kids are in school full time and I have more capacity, those are kind of chapters that I see myself diving into more, um, getting more specialized with lasers and, um, hopefully dad can still teach me, teach me his ways. But I, I, I think that I have hopes for getting more, you know, um, having more expertise in, in other types of lasers. But right now I plan to kind of just keep it a combination. Yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't, uh, well, thanks. That's great. We'll close there. It's great. Mom. It's super. Uh, I always love, uh, this is maybe the longest I've talked to you. So it's awesome. You're, you're, you're great. I'm yeah, I'm proud of you. It's, uh, it's amazing. And so, uh, thanks, thanks for being on the podcast and, uh, and I'll see you in a few hours and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, have some fun with family awesome. and we'll make family and business. Tonight. Yes, we will. All right. Well, thanks for having me. All right. Take Talk care. To you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the making of a multi-million dollar med spa podcast. I'm Kat Toronto and it's been an absolute joy to be part of your journey. Until next time, let your passion lead the way. See you soon.